Close to 800,000 persons die by suicide every year. Now, that's according to statistics from the World Health Organization. More statistics reveal that every 40 seconds, at least one person is likely to die by suicide. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among 15 to 29 year olds globally. When Nigerians crossed over to the new year in 2019, it was all prayers to God and excitement. Little did the nation anticipate the reign of multiple suicides that would soon ravage it. January 2, 2019 was greeted with the first case of suicide. DJ XG, the popular Lagos DJ, who took his own life allegedly over marital troubles just a few hours after posting a sad suicide note on his Instagram account. Then to Ms. Hikmat Badamosi, a 100 level student of the University of Port Harcourt. And that statistics continued to swell with a first class student of yet another Nigerian university the 21-year-old Akachi Chukwemeka, who took his own life after dropping a suicide note on his Facebook page. This suicide takes me all the way to the University of Nigeria and Suka, where his friends and classmates speak about his last moments. Akashi was dealing with depression long before he came out as an atheist. So if anything, it, it, the depression had left a footprint and like I said earlier you can find it reflected in his writing which is what a lot of people should do. Akachi's life is kind of complicated sort of because I've always known him right from year one as this type of person who is reticent it's kind of a lonely being let me put it that way he usually like being on his own kind of so most times even Earlier that day we met, I noticed his mood kind of. I even asked him basically, Akachi, what is your, what's your problem? I've asked him several times, what's your problem? He always tell me, Chris, you won't understand. I meet Victor, Akachi's closest friend and course mate. He is very emotional as he speaks with me. He deeply regrets his friend's decision to commit suicide. I never expected something like this to happen. Just, it was, it was a shock. It's so sad that he had to end his life at the ending while we were just about graduating, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't still understand it. And concerning the circumstances of his suicide, I personally know the, trust, the struggles he went through. From my findings, the pain of suicide is only passed on to the family and loved ones of the suicide victim, as Ifani, Akachi's friend, tells me. The Monday he died, the Monday morning, I saw him last. Uh, we greeted and we talked. The news I got around 8 a.m. was that he was in the hospital. So I had to rush to the medical center. I saw him in a really bad situation. Getting to around 8 p.m. in the night, I got the news that he passed on. The major issue there is uh, the reputation, should I say bad reputation in code that he led behind. Because, you know, for instance, someone would just walk up to you that he's a close friend. Why do you leave, let him do it? And someone might almost think that, okay, since you guys are close, you must know what happened to him. Or you participated in making him commit suicide. So the stigma and then the loneliness that your friend is gone. Just a few kilometers away from the campus, I meet this clergyman who is using his church to reach out to more depressed students. He complains to me that most Nigerian universities do not have the structure to help suicidal students. Talking about suicide among students, I have come to see that there are three factors implicated. Some cases are absolutely mental. Uh, the student loses mental coordination and he wants to kill himself. Others are emotional. 
the student is battling with failure, battling with heartbreaking relationship, battling with one thing or the other, sometimes even parental pressure. And uh, he breaks down emotionally, he's depressed, and he wants to kill himself. But others are ab absolutely demonic manipulations. The case of Akachi that happened last week, I believe is one glaring example of demonic manipulation. We live in a very harsh situation in the country now. There is poverty, there is joblessness, and no, it's not a good enough reason for someone to kill himself. It's not. Uh, that is why even those of them who go to school should understand that school is not just about passing exam. School is about being enlightened. So you're able to understand situations of life and how to bring them under your control. That's what education should give to anybody. And besides this uh, intellectual enlightenment, there should be emotional education. Uh, maybe the university should think about introducing a course like emotional intelligence as one of the general courses. He came all the way to this secluded building to take some bottles of Sniper. As at this time, last Monday, Akachi was actually battling for his life, a battle that he lost. Akachi's case is one case too many of suicide, of increasing suicide attempts across Nigeria. The Department of English and Literary Studies of the University of Nigeria, this used to be the class room of Akachi Chukwemeka who had actually committed suicide on May 10th. The last time Mr. Akachi was in this class was on May 10th, his last moments, according to information that I gathered. Well, this used to be one of his favorite sports in this class where he shared beautiful moments with classmates and friends. According to information that I've gathered from the head of department here, um, Akachi was actually one of the brightest students of the department and he was in a first class grade. Well, Akachi was a good student, um, very studious and um, he was also a student of mine, world black literature. And to be honest with you, I never had an inkling that there was any trouble with him. Only a few days after, another devastating news breaks about yet another suicide case. This time, a church worker, a music minister, allegedly from the redeemed Christian Church of God, Michael Oroshaye in Abuja. Now, this leads me to the streets of Lagos, where I ask the question, why would someone want to take their life? I just read recently of the jump bite who failed jump the second time and went to commit suicide, and that was crazy. I'm not God. <laughs> Even if God said that created everybody, knows that we are one way or the other going to fall short of his glory. So why do I want to commit suicide? I think the guy that committed suicide has low self-esteem. Suicide is not the best way out have a purpose on this earth, so I can't waste it by committing suicide. These answers lead me to a mega church where I ask this clergyman one question. What does religion say about suicide? The spirits responsible for suicide are wicked spirits. We've got to understand that this physical world is controlled by the spiritual. Paul said, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, wicked spirits in high places. And seeing that Islam is one of the two major religions in Nigeria, I am here at the Leki Central Mosque in Lagos to ask the same question. Is there a spiritual side to suicide? And if there is, what is it? As a Muslim cleric, I think uh, suicide is, uh, is demonic. It is uh, against the law of God, against the law of Allah. We never commit suicide. A Muslim must never commit suicide, must, even, must never even contemplate it. The life that you did not create, why would you want to take it? Religion has given us its side. Now, we speak to the experts. 
Dr. Maimona is a psychologist. She tells people to stop blaming suicide victims. Sometimes when people just sit down and just make you know, statements like those that have attempted suicide or those that have killed themselves, that they are worthless, they are sinners. No, you shouldn't say such a thing. We as a society, we, we should begin to build a culture of compassion where we show empathy to people, listen to people not judgmentally, to understand them from their point of view rather than you know, trust to respond to them. She says with love and support, along with professional help, Depression and suicide can be overcome. Send them to professionals where they can be properly evaluated, assessed, know the root cause of why they are even suicidal. Suicide is an end thing. It, it's a bigger picture, but you need to know what this person is even suicidal. And of course, if it's depression, depression is treatable. If it is pain, is it the kind of pain that can be managed? There are painkillers, there are even surgeries to even regulate pain. And there are even non-medication treatment for some of these illnesses. Meditation, yoga, some form of exercises and all that. So it's very key that we put all this on board. Let's not demor uh, demonize people that have completed suicide. Let's not see them as bad people. Let's not see them as evil people. Because anybody can be suicidal depending on your challenges, what you face, and of course from your past experiences. Oftentimes, when we speak of people attempting to take their lives, it seems vague, with very few sharing their stories. I spoke with Fumi, who had tried to take her life a few years ago. From her account, we understand the link between depression and suicide. Um, I was under a lot of pressure. Um, then it was marital pressure. I was just under a lot of pressure from you know, family, from in-laws, from my ex-husband at the time. Just, you know, hearing so much, you know, it was almost like the pressure of the marriage was on me. Like, oh, I wasn't doing enough. I wasn't doing well. I just felt very, and I, not only was I, Feeling like I wasn't doing well. I felt like I couldn't do anything to change, you know, the situation or to turn things around or to just, you know, so I just had this heavy burden, you know, upon me. And that's when I just started feeling depressed. Of course, at the time, I don't think I knew that I was depressed. I didn't know I was depressed until the time I tried to take my life. I was just very, very, um, you know, I was just very sad. According to more research, depression is one of the leading causes of suicide world over. Depression is a mood disorder characterized by a low mood. So it has to do with the mood. But what affects the mood has to do with your mental state, how you are mentally, then it affects the mood. Probably what you're going through, um, how things are not working out fine, the issues, the challenges that you're facing affects you mentally, then it basically affects your mood. You're not happy, you're feeling down, you're sad, you're indoor, you're secluded. Depression itself is a clinical diagnosis. You cannot just say I'm depressed because you're broke or someone jittered you or something didn't go in the way you plan it. But what are the symptoms of depression? If depression, that is, sorry, sadness or low mood, you are experiencing this on a near daily experience for at least two weeks, coupled with this second sign that I'm about to mention, loss of interest in what you used to find interesting, loss of interest in what you used to find pleasant, or you're beginning to feel you're apathic, there is no interest, there's no excitement about any activity you used to find interesting before. These two, when they are present on a near daily experience for at least two weeks, and they're beginning to affect your ability to relate with people, to work productively, and there are three other symptoms and signs among these many seven we call classical symptoms and signs of depression, like a change in your appetite. It could be appetite for food reduction or increase. It could be appetite for sex if for married ones, reduced or increased. It is a struggle with maintaining concentration or attention or focus or sustaining focus. That's another classical symptom and sign. If there is a problem with fatigue, with energy level, so you cannot explain where this fatigue is coming from. You cannot explain it. Or you are extra energetic, you are restless. Then there are other physical symptoms, especially in men. Depression can manifest as physical symptoms in men. 
Uh, if a man is beginning to visit a doctor, visit a clinic repeatedly, this week treated for malaria, next month treated for typhoid and malaria, and it's becoming a repetitive stuff, it can be a pointer to depression. Another classic of phys physical symptom is uh, sleep alteration. You're struggling to initiate sleep, or you might even find it easy to initiate sleep, but you are waking up intermittently, or you even sleep all through normally, but when you wake up, fatigue is there, you don't feel refreshed. That's another classical sign of depression. Then, a chronic feeling of guilt, hopelessness, or regret can also be a pointer to depression. Then, uh, another common one in our society is what we call social withdrawal. In fact, I should have mentioned this as number three, social withdrawal or isolation. Uh, you could begin to withdraw yourself from social media, Facebook, Instagram, and the likes, or even religious activities that you, you belong to, or social clubs that you belong to, or even your siblings or family members. That could be a pointer. If you see anybody, observe this in anybody, that could be a pointer to depression. Then lastly, suicidal ideation. And I need to explain this uh, because it's quite uh, peculiar with Africans. Uh, because of religious indoctrination or religious restraint, some people might not have it well thought out to hand it up. But when someone begins to tell you in any conversation, they are quick to say, I just want to escape from everything and just be alone somewhere. It could be a pointer. Or there's a news about a collapse of building. And uh, the person is saying, what's the big deal about collapse of building? Even if where we are now, if the building collapses, what's the big deal? We end it up, we go over and we go and rest. That could be a pointer. Uh, the, the religious folks can sound like this. I just want rapture to happen. Let's just go. Let Jesus come and let's end it up. If it's becoming repetitive like that, it could be a pointer. So these are the nine symptoms and signs of depression. But with the first two that I mentioned, must be present with three other ones, making five. When they are present on a near daily experience for at least two weeks, and they're beginning to affect the productive living or relationability of that person. Something has shifted in the brain, both chemically or structurally, that a diagnosis of depression is made. And at that point, the person needs professional help. There's this tendency in Africa, because mental health issues cannot really be grasped with physical descriptions of physical ailments. They are quite abstract we tend to just adduce everything to spiritual under the balance of religious doctrination. Because I hear people say to the people battling depression, have a faint grip on your mind. Come on, are you not a child of faith? Are you not a prayer warrior? And my question to those people is this. If a woman has breast cancer, do you say to the woman, have a faint grip on your breast? You are a child of faith or you encourage the person to seek help. If a man is battling prostate cancer, do you say to the man, come on, you're a prayer warrior, have a firm grip on your prostate. You know why? Because those ones are physical. You can rightly see the symptoms and signs, physically. But because this is psychological, it's quite abstract. Pray with the person, quite all right, but refer them for professional help. And how can you know that your family or friend is depressed? A lot of depression cases will be caught early. If the people around, are able to spot it early enough and able to get the right information and refer her to the right places. Because these things will manifest subtly. Because it's a progression. It doesn't just happen subtly, suddenly. It manifests subtly, but people cannot pick it. What remedies are there for depression and suicidal thoughts? Globally, we are advocating now that all organizations should have one or two people in their human resources department or human capacity development that are trained in mental health first aid uh, so that they can deploy this model. I'll give model A L G double E, A representing assurance. You can only assure someone uh, when you are aware of the signs and symptoms. So if you don't know how to spot the signs and symptoms, how do you even start assuring? You will start misreading the behavior. There are Ways people that are already sinking into depression behave. If care is not taken, you will misread it or misinterpret it as being snobbish. You will misinterpret it as being unkind. 
or has been lazy, or has been a man or woman of weak faith, or not prayerful enough. So awareness is key. Awareness and assurance, that's the hey. Being able to assure them that it's something, it's just a, a mental health issue. You're passing through so, so, so conditional. now. It could be triggered by stress. It could be triggered by a trauma. But you can get out of it. Now, L is listening non-judgmentally. You must know how to communicate with people battling depression. The problem with us, especially Africans, is that we are quick to conclude and condemn. And that's not love. Listen non-judgmentally. In fact, limit your talking and do more of listening. And when you're listening, you are not trying to judge them as being weak, not mentally strong, not prayerful, not strong in faith, or this and that. You must be able to listen non-judgmentally to them. By the time you are repeatedly saying, aren't you a man of faith? Aren't you prayerful enough? You are judging because you are concluding it's lack of prayer that led the person into depression. And you're further sinking the person into depression. I see a lot of uh, comments on social media when somebody says I'm depressed, even though I'm always quick to say that a lot of people that claim they are depressed, they are not depressed, they are just sad because they are broke or they just got heartbroken. There's a difference. You will get out of it if you know what to do because it's natural to be sad. However, depression is different. But I see a lot of people commenting when people say that I'm depressed. They say, is it only you that you are depressed? All of us, we are depressed. As long as you are in this country, this country, you cannot run away, this and that. But that's not the right way to go. Listen non-judgmentally. Just the, the awareness that you are present in their life is enough strength for them to even pull through to a larger extent. Then next level, next one is G, which is giving and giving support. Giving support and uh, information. So a lot of people, you know, we have more people that are unaware of these signs and symptoms and what to do than people that are aware. So that your friend, that your colleague might not even be aware that this is depression and battling. That's where I'm low in mood. That's where I'm withdrawing. Might not even be aware. Just you giving information that, have you considered researching or checking it on a doctor concerning these symptoms you're feeling? Because I think I've experienced it before. I've read about it that when you're having this, when you're having that, it could be depression and it's better caught early. It's better managed early. That's giving the right information. The fourth under the model, which is E, is encouragement. Encouragement. And uh, when we say encouragement, it's encouragement with tips. There are basic tips that everybody should be equipped with. As simple as nutrition change, diet change. Because your food controls your mood. These are things we need to create more awareness about. Uh, as simple as how to be in charge of your thoughts, how to be in charge of your self-talks, how to reframe from negative thinking to positive thinking. Encouraging people is quite key, and the people around must be able to do this. Uh, it will go a long way in preventing suicide uh, and also curtailing the progression of depression. Then the last E, which is essentially about ensuring that you follow up on the person, the person gets the professional help. It's not enough to refer the person or give information that you need to say, doctor, you need to say psychiatrist or a psychotherapist. It's not enough. You must be able to ensure that the person gets that help, seeks that professional help, follow up. What are the obstacles? Could it be fear of financial implication? Could it be stigma in the society that they will see me going to see a shrink? You must ensure that you are able to help them follow up to seek help, see the professional help, and if there's any obstacle, you help them to remove it or you ensure you support them in removing. That's why we say that social support is as important as psychiatry and psychotherapy. Family, friends, colleague, workplace, the support they give is as important as the medications. By now, because of the crisis we are having, I dare call it crisis, mental health crisis in Nigeria, I believe every religious body should have a counseling center. And uh, religious bodies have a lot of role to play. Uh, we're not relegating their responsibility or their role or their usefulness, but we're saying they should do informed religious help. Uh, while they're praying, while they're helping them support, why not try to have counseling center? Why not try to have counseling center? It doesn't cost much. So that it is served as a mental health force. So churches and mosques should rise up to this responsibility why government is doing theirs and we are advocating for government to do more 
churches and mosques must rise up because, see, we cannot divorce our societal culture from religion. We are highly religious. A lot of Nigerians will obey their pastors or imams before they obey their parents, before they obey doctors. According to experts, with more awareness and a lot of effort, depression and suicide can be overcome.